Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to all of you. The topic for today's discussion is Islands Induction in Vertebrates. This is a very important topic from developmental biology. Here we are going to study the genetic control that works behind islands induction in vertebrates. As we all know, gastrulation establishes the basic body plan. It transforms the early embryo is uh, transformed from blastula stage to a gastrula stage. So gastrulation establishes basic body plan of vertebrates. It is a process in early embryonic development that transforms a blastula into gastrula. This is something that we all <clears throat> know. And what is blastula? Blastula is a one-dimensional layer of epithelial cells, whereas gastrula is a multi-layered and multi-dimensional structure with three germ layers, namely ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. If you take a look at this, here I have mentioned the different organs and from where do they originate like endoderm gives rise to middle ear lung alveolar cells thyroid cells digestive cells glands of the stomach intestine tongue then mesoderm gives rise to your skeletal muscle cells cardiac muscles rpcs smooth muscles all these I'm not discussing all these things in detail because this is not our topic of discussion today. Uh, we need to know about uh, the ectoderm, neurons, eye. That is why I have given you this uh, picture just to help you to recall these three germ layers and their respective functions. Now coming to our main topic today. See, ectodermal competence and ability to respond to the optic vesicle inducer in Xenopus. Here we will study this uh, process of islands induction in Xenopus, that is in an amphibian. So what happens here? Let's first take a look. See, the optic vesicle is able to induce lens formation in the anterior portion of the ectoderm but not in the presumptive trunk and abdomen. It means what it is. The optic vesicle is only able to induce lens formation in the anterior portion of the ectoderm not elsewhere. Now see, if the optic vesicle is removed, the surface ectoderm forms either an abnormal lens or no lens at all. So the main influential body behind formation of lens is which one? The optic vesicle. If the optic vesicle is removed, there is abnormal lens or there is no lens at all. Okay, now see, if you are removing the optic vesicle, okay, and like, as I told you, the surface uh, ectoderm either forms an abnormal lens or there is no lens at all, this is one. And see, remember, most other tissues are not able to substitute for optic vesicles as well. This is important. Now, the ability to respond to the specific inductive signal is called competence. We will come across this word competence 
several times from now on. See, if I am teaching a student, that is one part of the activity, one part of the event, you can say. Now, how much competent is the student? How will I understand? If the student is picking up whatever I'm trying to say, if the student is picking it up well, then I'll say that the student is a competent one. So, only giving, giving, giving won't help. The student, the receiver should have the capacity to receive it and respond. So the ability to respond to specific inductive signal is called competent. A particular tissue must be competent enough to respond to a particular inductive signal. One induction or one uh, inductive signal or one induction you can say will give rise Will, uh, will give a tissue the competence to respond to another inducer. So it is often seen that one induction makes the tissue competent enough to respond to another inducer or another inductive signal. Okay, so studies on amphibians suggest that the first inducers of the lens may be foregut endoderm and heart-forming mesoderm that underlie the lens forming ectoderm during the early and mid gastrula stages. So what is happening here? The first inducer of the lens is actually the foregut endoderm and the heart forming mesoderm. Where are they that underlie the lens forming ectoderm during the early and mid gastrula stages? What happens, you see, if you just take a note of this, the anterior neural plate, remember, we'll talk about this, the anterior neural plate sends some signal that promotes the synthesis of PAC6 transcription factor in the anterior ectoderm. Now, this is a new term that has come into play. We will talk about this here. See, now what is this PAC6? It is an important, it is an extremely important term that is going to be used from now on in order to make our understanding clear and perfect. Hmm? So, PAC6 is important in providing the competence to respond to the inducer from the optic cup. Although the optic vesicle appears to be the inducer, the anterior ectoderm has already been induced by at least two other tissues. Which are those two other tissues? These two, the foregut endoderm and the, and the heart-forming mesoderm. Right? Now, see the paracrine factor we will talk about some paracrine factors now. Paracrine factors are secreted by the optic vesicle. What are the two paracrine factors? BMP4 and FGF8. This BMP4 induces the production of SOX2 transcription factor and FGF induces what? Induces the appearance of production of LMAF transcription factor. Next, what do we get to see? See, the combination of PAC6, SOX2 and LMAF in the ectoderm is needed for the production of the lens and the activation of lens-specific genes such as gamma crystalline. You will have to remember the names of these genes and their specific functions, their roles. Now see, we will come across another important term which is called reciprocal induction. What is reciprocal induction now? Reciprocal means some. Uh, it has got something to do with role reversal. Hmm? 
what happens here, see, once the lens is formed, it induces the optic vesicle. We all know that the optic vesicle is the prime inducer. Right at the beginning, we have talked that the optic vesicle is able to induce lens formation in the anterior portion of the ectoderm. So, optic vesicle was the inducer. Now, once the lens is formed, it induces optic vesicle. So, what is happening here? The inducer itself is becoming induced. This is reciprocal going in the reverse direction. So, the, op uh, the lens which was not the inducer in the beginning. Who was the inducer in the beginning? The optic vesicle. Now, once it is formed, once the lens is formed, it is inducing the optic vesicle. So, we can say that the inducer becomes induced. What's happening? See, the lens induces the optic vesicle. The optic vesicle will do what? Influence, uh, will come under influence of factors secreted by the lens. The optical vesicle now will come under the influence of several factors that are secreted by the lens. Then, then what will happen? The optic cup wall will differentiate. The wall of the optic cup will now differentiate to form pigmented retina and neural retina. And this lens will induce the ectoderm above it to become cornea. Now see, if we just take a note of what happens, you will understand. I'll write it in a very uh, simple way. What actually happens, see, under the influence of lens, the corneal uh, ectoderm cells become columnar and they secrete multiple layers of collagen. Then uh, mesenchymal cells from the neural crest use this collagen matrix to enter the area and secrete a set of proteins, including the enzymes uh, hyaluronidase that further differentiate the, uh, the cornea. And a third signal comes, to, comes into play, uh, the, which is the hormone thyroxine that dehydrates the tissue and makes it transparent. So whatever I have said, please... Take a note of it. That's very important. See, so the lens influences the ectoderm. One second. above it to become the cornea. Okay, the corneal ectoderm becomes columnar and secrete multiple layers of protein. Fine. Then what will happen next? The mesenchymal cells. From the neural crest, what will they do? Use this protein to enter the area. And 
secrete a set of protein that further differentiate the cornea. And finally, what will happen? The hormone thyroxine thyroxine hormone dehydrates the tissue and makes it transparent. So this is the flow of event, what is happening. Apart from this, we should also know the names of the uh, tissues that help in eye formation. That is also something very important. We should all know that. Tissues that help in eye formation. First, let's number it, the neural ectoderm. Next, what does it do? It is associated with the optic vesicle. It makes the optic vesicle. Second, surface ectoderm. It forms the lens. Then coming to the neural crest. What does it do? It forms the cornea and the bony structure. And fourth, the mesoderm. What does this do? It makes the extra ocular muscle. So what actually happens, the ectoderm, you know, divides into the neural ectoderm, neural crest and surface ectoderm. The neural ectoderm will influence the neural plate, which in turn will influence the neural tube, which again will influence the brain to form anterior part and then eye formation takes place. Fine, now we will talk about the formation of eye field. What happens during the formation of eye field? Formation of eye field begins with specification of neural tube. The anterior portion is specified by expression of OXT2 gene or OX2 gene. Now we will come across another protein here that is called noggin, N-O-G-G-I-N, noggin. Noggin inhibits BMP and ET gene. Noggin inhibits BMP but promotes expression of OX2. It, it has the potential to inhibit BMP at the same time it is promoting the expression of OX2. Now, what is happening here? It is inhibiting ET gene as well. Once the OX2 protein accumulates, it blocks noggin and thus ET protein is produced. So, see noggin. See here. 
Nogim is inhibiting this one. It is also inhibiting ET. Fine. Now, if we want ET production to happen, there is there should be something that will stop Nogin from functioning. If the, the function of Nogin is blocked, then this inhibition will be will no longer be existing. Then ET gene will function. So see here, once OX2 is OX2 protein accumulates, see Nogin is uh, promoting the expression of OX2. So once OX2 is accumulating, OX2 protein is accumulating. It starts to inhibit Nogin. OX2 will inhibit Nogin. And once this Nogin is inhibited, then there is no inhibition working, working to stop ET gene. Thus, ET, gene, ET proteins will uh, start getting produced. See here, Nogin is associated with neural induction and OX2 expression. It will induce, I mean, it will, uh, it will help in neural in induction and thus OX2 will be produced. Now, OX2 will influence the forebrain and the midbrain specification. And as a result, what will happen? ET, RX1, PAX6, 6, 6. 6, 3 and LHX2. These will all come into play and will induce and will start eye field specification. I, I mean, these will make eye field specification occur. And finally, what will happen? Under the influence of ET, RX1, PAX6, LHX2, TLL and OPT lambda, finally, I formation will occur. Remember, this uh, PAC6 is very important in lens and uh, retina specification and it is a very common gene in photoreceptive cells. Also, like it is seen, it is seen that uh, SHH from the precordal plate suppresses PAC6 expression in the center of the embryo, dividing the eyelid into two. But if uh, there is excess expression of uh, SSH, then what might happen? Give it a thought. Then PAC6 will, uh, will get expressed over a large area. And as a result, what will happen? There is no formation of eye. So now again, coming back to this uh, flow chart. Noggin is uh, inhibiting BMP. It is inhibiting ET. ET controls Rx1. Rx1, once this, uh, once OX2 blocks Noggin, hmm, once OX2 is blocking Noggin, then this one will no longer become functional. Once this is working, this will no longer become functional. And then it will, now this will become functional and it will control uh, Rx1 and Rx1 will promote PAC6. And once PAC6 gets promoted, cascade of gene expression constituting eye field will occur. So, this flow chart or this scheme has to be very clear in your mind. If this is clear, then you will be able to answer a lot of questions that often, that are often asked from this portion. Some other uh, few important lines or few important points that you all should remember is that like the major sensory organ of the head developed from the interaction of the neural tube with a series of 
epidermal thickenings called cranial ectodermal placodes. Hmm. Uh, the most anterior of these are olfactory placodes. Olfactory placodes, as you know, they are associated with smell. Huh? The major sensory organs of the head develop from the interaction of the neural tube with a series of epidermal thickenings called cranial ectodermal placodes. Hmm. Now, the most anterior of these are the olfactory placodes. That means something related to smell. Now, the optic vesicle becomes optic cup. See, the optic vesicle Becomes the optic cup, hmm, which is two walled. One is the inner, the other is the outer. This inner is what? The neural retina. The outer is what? The pigmented retina. Okay. Now, the cells of the outer layer will produce melanin and will ultimately become the pigmented retina. This will produce melanin. and will become the pigmented retina. The cells of the inner uh, layer proliferate rapidly and generate a variety of glia, ganglion cells. Ah, they will, this will produce what? Glia, ganglion cells. Then it will also produce the uh, inner uh, interneurons and light sensitive photoreceptor neurons all these together will constitute the neural retina. Okay. The retinal ganglion are neurons where axons and electrical impulses, uh, where axons send electrical impulses to the brain and uh, their axons meet at the base of the eye and travel down the optic stalk. And this very optic stalk is called the optic nerve. So this is all about our discussion today. I hope you have got a clear picture of eye lens induction and vertebrates. Please go through different uh, types of questions that are often asked from this portion. If you have any doubt, any confusion, please feel free to get back to me. I'll try my best to clear your confusion, doubts whatsoever. So till then, stay
stay connected for many such upcoming videos. Till then, happy learning and bye-bye.